Hey everybody, welcome back to another Rancho Cordova art tutorial. My name is Ron Hall with Rancho Cordova Arts. Sit back, relax as we serve up some cake baking fun with the great British baking show Ranch Cordova version. Hello everybody, welcome to the British baking show, yay! Alright, I promise I'm not going to do a, a bad English accent for this whole show, but I wanted to get you into the spirit. Um, this is a cake that I did a long time ago, and so I'm going to try to improve upon it, my baking skills. And so as you're kind of looking at that, I wanted to talk about um, what this is all about today. Besides the, uh, the hit show, the uh, Great British Baking Show, we wanted to talk about a local artist who's kind of known for doing pies and cakes and things of that nature, uh, things that can be found in real life. And... Uh, that is Wayne Tebow, and he is a local artist. Well, he went to school here, and he spent some time in the military um, here in this area. So Wayne Tebow is a California artist best known for his paintings of yummy food. Tebow's first wish was to be a cartoonist because he loved classic cartoons and comic strips. When he was a soldier in World War II, he created a comic called Wingtips. Before he became a painter, he worked as a commercial artist in advertising and briefly as a cartoonist for the Disney Studios. Many of Tebow's most famous paintings from the 1950s show common objects from American life, like rows and rows of cakes and pastries that might be seen in a cafeteria or bakery window. He painted cakes, pies, donuts, gumball machines, toys, hats, sandwiches, and plates of pancakes. Tebow's paintings show simple shapes, shadows, thick brush strokes, and strong colors. Tebow didn't stop with cakes and pies. His paintings of San Francisco streets and California river landscapes are vividly colorful and so realistic that many look like abstract patterns. Pop art became an important movement in America in the 1960s, and Tebow's cake paintings inspired other artists to look at common objects in new ways. So with that and that inspiration, I thought we would kind of do a great British baking show theme, but rather than baking, we are going to be making. And I'm going to show you some of the supplies that we're going to use today coming up now. All right, let's get into the supplies that we're going to need today. Uh, I'm going to start off with watercolor paper or a paper that's going to stand up to watercolors or other types of paints. Uh, your watercolors, acrylic paints for our frosting, a uh, cup for our water, for the watercolors, some craft glue, uh, various pencils and brushes, and then our cooking supplies, believe it or not, uh, vanilla extract and whatever sprinkles you have for cookies or cakes that you might have around the house. And those are the items we're going to use today and talk about. I also wanted to point out, it's okay to have a cat around the house, but if they start getting into your paintbrushes, you may want to uh, <laughs> take them away from them. All right, let's get ready to design our cake. I uh, just wanted to bring to your attention that feel free to use... Um, magazines that have cakes in them or you can go online and check out some images of cakes to give you some inspiration for designing your cake. We've got our watercolor paper and our pencils here. We can do a full cake. We can do a, a cake with a piece taken out of it, kind of show the inside of the cake, or we can do a, a single piece of cake on a plate. The option is up to you. All right, let's get into this. All right. On your paper, the first thing you want to do is draw a little plate. And so what I do is I just kind of make a oblong shape, give myself a little bit of a bottom for the, um, the plate, show some texture. And I'm going to go light, and I'll probably erase this before I paint because it will um, be seen through the, through the watercolor. So start off with doing a little plate. And now we're going to build up and make our cake. All right, well, I have drawn in a little piece of cake. What I'll do now is I'll erase some of these lines from the plate behind and then I'll put some layers like the cake is layered and uh, and we can progress from there. I'll clean it up a little bit and then um, erase and just leave a faint line so again it won't show through the watercolor. 
All right, we are back. We have our cake drawn out. Um, we've added the layers in between. We've erased any of the plate lines through the cake and we've kind of lightened it up and cleaned it up um, overall. We're getting ready to start our watercolor portion. And for review on how to paint in watercolors, please see uh, my friend Marsha Mason's videos on watercolor and uh, textures with watercolor. Um, for this painting, we are going to do watercolor on the plate and watercolor on the actual sponge part of the cake. And I'll do it in steps. Um, I wanted to use a blue and I'll do darker around the, the lip of the plate and then some dark blue in the, uh, the rear of the plate to add some shadowing. I'm gonna do a, a, just a liquid water wash and then I'll add my color in. Um, for my water, I am gonna use a little bit of uh, vanilla extract, just a drop, and this is not for drinking, needless to say, but um, just to add aviance and kind of get you um, in the mood to uh, make a cake that we cannot eat, but will kind of feel like um, all the aspects of making a cake. So I will be back and show you the first portion of the plate. Okay, we are back and I've got the main part of my plate done. I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna add the definition of a uh, kind of the lip of the plate a little bit darker and then some shadowing behind the cake. So I'll come in with some darker um, watercolor blue that I'm using. So I'll grab a little bit more pig pigment um, and I'll probably start off a little bit more more dry and not go with the, the wash and just bring in some pigment and darken those areas up. All right, we are back. We've added uh, shading to the lip of the plate and some shading behind the cake. Now I'll do the um, brown within the uh, the sponge of the cake, and we want to make sure we leave the frosting and layer area um, clean for our uh, acrylic paint for the frosting. So we will be back, and I'll show you the uh, the sponge of the cake. All right, we are back with our freshly baked cake. I didn't really bake it, but I wanted to add dramatic effect here. Um, what I did with um, the sponge layers is I just went with brown. Um, watercolor and after that dried I came back with a stencil brush and I just did dry pigment kind of create a spongy effect you can see that so we're getting ready to go into the frosting phase I have a light magenta that I'm going to use I've got it already pre-mixed so it's nice and creamy frosting like in our salsa container and I'll go ahead and paint the, the frosting at the top and then the in-between layers it will have frosting also. So we'll see how that looks and we'll be back in a few. All right, bakers, we are back and we have our cake that's been frosted. Um, with a round brush, I painted with the uh, light magenta. and I got the inner layers of the frosting and we just went down through our lines and painted those. And then with the uh, the top of the cake frosting, I did use a kind of a dabbing swirling method with the round brush and then I did go back over with a with a flat brush um, to kind of give it a an extra little bit of covering and shine. What we're going to do now is once we make sure that this is good and dry and it still has a little bit to go, we're going to use our Elmer's glue and flat brush and we'll just put a light coating on. And I am really hoping that it, it dries so it just gives it a nice um, kind of glazed look. And when it gets tacky, I will go with the sprinkles and just kind of put them in, not too much, um, kind of go in nice and lightly. If, if the sprinkles get too much moisture, they'll um, start to bleed color. So I'm going to try to get it when uh, the glue is tacky and get a little bit of a sprinkling effect. And that kind of adds uh, even more to the a 3D effect of the cake. So we will be back after we accomplish that. All right, while I'm waiting for the main cake to, to dry, um, what I'm gonna do is talk about this. So this is just a um, little cupcake I made and I just cut um, a little cup in half. This one is kind of uh, aluminum foil based and so it took a little bit to get the glue in there. And then I also used the paint to kind of seep in and dry it out and kind of built up layers. Um, I did some sprinkles knowing that they would bleed and then I, I went over them and so they kind of bleed through and they kind of add, add a um, 
a sprinkling effect, but once this dries really solid, I'll go with the glue and then do regular sprinkles so it'll kind of add a multi-dimensional look to it. Um, the background, I used uh, our friend Marsha Mason's splattering technique with watercolor using both purple and green. And um, be sure to look, out, look at her watercolor texture videos one and two to see how you can do backgrounds and different techniques. Um, so essentially just a round brush, getting a little bit of pigment and just tapping the, the top of the brush um, before the, the main, main part that has the pigment and kind of getting the splatter technique. And you can use this for like a, a card, birthday cards, um, celebratory things. And so um, once I get the, the glue and the sprinkles on, I, I think it might look kind of cool. So we will be back with our main cake piece in a minute. All right, bakers, we are back, and I wanted to uh, just kind of film the process as it went. I wanted to point out that um, I changed my mind about brushing it in with a flat brush. I just used the glue. I decided I wanted to create more of a glazed effect rather than just flat, and so I am hoping that there'll be like little areas of shine. Um, I went ahead and used the sprinkles and kind of went into the area. I just caution you to go real light so you don't dump. Um, and you can always get some and then just kind of hand put them in the specific spots. So we'll see how this dries and if there's any areas that um, are lacking or I feel like we need to fill in, we can do that. Um, some will fall off and hopefully um, we won't get too much bleeding from some of the colors. Uh, if, it, if we do, just like the British baking show, things happen and hopefully we'll still have a good tasting cake. All right, we'll be back when it dries. All right, well our cake is still in our imaginary oven. I wanted to do an update on our cupcake. Um, I added some more layers and it's still quite wet. It's gonna take a while, but I went in with um, the larger sprinkles and uh, I kind of give it a more festive look. So hopefully this will look okay. Yay. All right, so let's see how we did with our cake. I will move this one to a secure location and our cake and we do oh we changed it up so what I actually did was I really wanted it to pop so I uh, I cut it out from the uh, watercolor paper and I put it on some black construction paper and I think it really pops and kind of it's kind of floating look almost and I really added some more um, sprinkles I went in with the um, just I, I picked out white and pink. I wanted it to really uh, pop, give it a more 3D look. Would I eat this in real life? No, that's too much, but I um, really wanted to give it a, a textured look. Well, this is a look at an old cake I did and the new cake I did. So I don't know if it's an improvement, but it's different, that's for sure. And I want to thank everyone for uh, working with me today. My name is Ron Hall with Ranch Cordova Arts. And uh, you be safe out there, stay well, and stay creative.